In this video, we're going to be talking about what's called empirical probability. The actual probability is the population relative frequency of an event, in the case of a finite population. An empirical probability is a sample relative frequency of an event. So empirical probability is an experimental probability or a sample relative frequency. So it's really not a probability of, at all, but it's an estimate or approximation of an actual probability. So it's really a relative frequency. Now we have something called the law of large numbers. And it says that as the sample size increases, it is less and less likely to have significant deviation in the sample relative frequencies from the actual theoretical probability, the population relative frequencies. So if we perform an experiment a large number of times, we would expect the empirical probability, the sample relative frequency, to be quite close to the actual probability. So we can use empirical probability to approximate actual probability, especially in cases where the actual probability is difficult to compute exactly. We can also use empirical probability to test the reasonableness of a computed actual probability to check the computations and assumptions used to reach that probability. So again, a fine, if we have a finite sample space, the probability actually equals the population relative frequency. Now we can actually perform a probability experiment numerous times and use the relative frequency of an event uh, in the samples of the sample to estimate the probability of the event. This estimate is known as an empirical probability or experimental probability. Again, it is not an actual probability, but is instead a relative frequency but it is often a good approximation of the actual theoretical probability and it's often easier to compute than the theoretical probability. So using experiments to find empirical probabilities are sometimes called simulations and they're also sometimes called Monte Carlo methods after uh, a place in Europe there where a lot of gambling occurs. So uh, what I want you to do now is we're going to do a simulation. Okay, simulation. So be sure to complete the task on each slide before progressing to the next slide. So during this video or this PowerPoint presentation, you will need the following physical or virtual versions of, of, the, of the physical of things. You'll need a fair coin to flip. Now, if you're going to do this a bunch, you can use a probability simulator on your calculator or similar application on your phone or computer if the physical objects are unavailable. So if you have a TI-84, for example, you can use the apps uh, ProbSim. So stop this presentation and get these materials before you come back. Press pause now. Okay, so now we're going to have our, you hopefully you got your coin in front of you or maybe a simulator for this. What's the sample space and what's the probability of each simple event in the sample space? Pretty simple, what is it? Well, the sample space is heads or tails, which you'll abbreviate as H and T. And the probability of a heads is the same as the probability of a tails, which is one half or 0.5 or 50%. Pretty simple. Does this mean that if we flip a coin once that it will come up 50% heads and 50% tails? Well, no, of course not, that's silly. It's either gonna come up 100% heads or 100% tails on one flip. You can't get 50% with one flip. Well, what if we flip it twice? Well, actually flip it twice and write down your results. By actually flipping a, a physical coin, it's best if you have one. Now, do you expect, what do you expect? One head and one tail? Yeah, that's kind of maybe what we might expect, but you, would you be surprised if you got two heads or two tails instead? No, you probably wouldn't. Now, let's repeat this experiment 10 times. So you're gonna, uh, one experiment is flip twice. And do that 10 times. You're going to get 10 pairs of flips and record your results. What do you notice? Actually do the experiment. Well, as with any probability experiments, your results will vary from time to time. So if I have a whole class full of students do this, I'm, uh, let's say a class of 30 students, I'm going to get 30 different sets of results. Okay, so with two flips of the coin, the probabilities would indicate that we might expect one head and one tail. 
However, it's also fairly likely that we get both heads or both tails instead. Now, with 10 trial pairs, you probably notice a lot that resulted in 50% heads and 50% tails, but you also got many that were 100% heads or 100% tails. We don't expect the sample relative frequency to be exactly equal to the theoretical probability. Now, before completing the experiments, what do you expect to see? Flip a coin 100 times and record your results. Or maybe you could use a probability simulator to do it. And let's use a probability simulator to make a flip a coin 1,000 times. Now, what would you expect to see? Well, based on the probability of 50% heads and 50% tails, we would expect to get close to that for our relative frequency. So for 100 flips, we'd expect to get close to, but probably not exactly, 50 heads and 50 tails. Would we be surprised to get 45 heads and 55 tails? What about 10 heads and 90 tails? Well, 45 and heads, 55 tails, maybe not. we might not be too surprised there. But 10 heads and 90 tails, that's kind of, we'd be suspicious that something uh, is going on, that this is maybe not a completely fair coin then. Because that would be surprising. So which of these would you find most surprising? Flipping 10 times and getting 7 heads and 3 tails, 70% heads. Or flipping 100 times, 70 heads and 30 tails. Or flipping a thousand times against 700 heads and 300 tails. It's 70% heads each time. Which would you be most surprising? Well, it actually turns out that the probability of seven or more heads flipping 10 times is 17%. It's a little unusual, but not really that surprising. But it turns out that flipping a hundred times and getting 70 or more heads would be extremely unusual and would be an extremely surprising result. The probability of 70 or more heads, uh, if it's a fair coin, turns out to be 0.004%. Okay? It's extremely unusual. And if you flipped a fair coin a thousand times and got 700 heads, although it's theoretically possible, it's nearly impossible because it's so unusual. The probability of 70, 700 or more heads is less than 10 to the negative 12. The calculator would just round that off to zero. It's very unlikely. Now, how did I get these prob exact probability here and here and, and you know, get that it was this small? Well, that's using something I'll, we'll go over a little bit later in a later video. But the point is, is that with a large number of percentages, we'd expect something much more close to the 50% mark. So the large number, law of large numbers says as the number of trials of a probability experiment increases, it's less and less likely the experimental relative frequencies will differ significantly from the theoretical probabilities. So if we repeat the experiment a large number of times, we expect the relative frequencies, empirical probabilities, to approximate the theoretical probabilities very well. This phenomenon is known as the law of large numbers. So using techniques that we will discuss later, we can compute the probability, rounded, that a particular sample of n flips of a coin will result in fewer than 45% or more than 55% heads. So with 10 coins, there's a 75.4% that you're going to get something outside of that percentage. With 100 coins, it drops down to 27%. With 500 coins, that drops down to about 2%. And with 1,000 coins, it's less than 1%, about 0.14%. So notice that that percentage of getting something very far off of 50%, you know, farther than 5% one way or the other, that, that percentage drops dramatically as the number of coins, the number of flips increases. So the more times we repeat the experiment, the lower the probability that we will get the empirical probability that is very far away from the actual probability. So we would think that our experimental probability would be a pretty good approximation of the real probability, maybe not dead on, but pretty close if we do it a lot of times. Now, uh, in the last video, I talked a little bit about American Roulette, and this is an example of casinos banking on the law of large numbers. This is what, they, they, this is what makes them money.
So remember, a roulette, a, a, wall, a wheel is spun, the balls drop, eventually lands in a spot. Uh, there are 36 slots, number 1 through 36. 18 are black and 18 are red. But there's also a green 0 and a green double 0. The basic bet, either choose black or red. The payoff odds, which are not really odds, they're payoff ratios, are 1 to 1. So if you bet a uh, dollar and uh, you win a dollar back for every dollar that you bet. Okay, for every dollar you bet, you get it back, plus you get a dollar back in winnings, if you win. So what are the actual odds against black? What's the probability black, probability red, and what's the probability green? We actually worked this out in a previous video, so see if you can do it again now. Press pause. So the actual odds against black are 20 to 18, or 10 to 9. So it's about 1.1 repeated to 1. The probability of black or the probability of red, either one, is 18 out of 38. 1838s or 9 19s are about 47.4%, less than 50%. The probability of green is 1 19th or about 5.26%. So if you want to think of the basic setup, 95, about 95% 95 of the time, the money is taken from the people betting on red, given the people betting on black or vice versa. But 5.26% of the time, the ball lands on green, and the casino takes everybody's money. So the casino wants a large volume of business so that they can bank on getting about 5.26% of the, of the revenue in. So this is the law of large numbers in action. So we can use experimentation to simulate a probability experiment, and we can be fairly sure that the empirical probabilities, in other words, experimental sample relative frequencies, will be fairly close to, but probably not exactly right on, the actual theoretical probabilities if the number of trials is very large. So the larger the number of trials used in the simulation, the more confident we are that the empirical probability is a good estimate of the theoretical probability.